Hello, welcome to a Zatu review. Here we are reviewing A Fistful of Meeples. The game is set up for two players with three meeples placed randomly in each building. Each player will then choose one of the corner buildings to put their uh, unupgraded uh, awning on. So an unupgraded lets you draw two uh, stone from the bag for every e for uh, when you place a yellow there. And if you upgrade it, it lets you draw four and is worth 10 points rather than five. The game will end in one of three ways. When all the gold bars have gone from the bank, when all the dynamite has been drawn from the bag, or when the graveyard is full. On a player's turn, they're going to be selecting a building, taking all the meeples from that building, and then moving them left or right, dropping them off at each space. If they drop them off in a shoot, if they pass a shootout space that is empty, they place their colour token on it and place the meeple on top of that. If they have a meeple on a shootout space already, then when they went past the opposite one, they would just ignore it and jump over it. The meeples come in uh, different colours and each meeple has a different role. Yellow meeples are miners and when they are placed under a building they will draw that many times from the bag for the owner of that building. So uh, I would draw two and in the bag you're going to find gold and stone and sometimes dynamite. So if I was blue player and I placed that one there then I would get two draws. However if I was blue player and I placed that one there the grey player would get those draws instead. The builders will build wherever they can. So if I place this here, I would need the three stone to upgrade this building. Or if I place here, I would need two stone and one gold to upgrade that building. That means where you place these is incredibly important. I don't want to give my opponent a chance to build when they don't uh, on my turn. So I might place it there now because they have no um, ingredients I was going to say no none of the required building materials red are bandits and they will or robbers they will rob every miner in a location so if I place a robber here he will rob the uh, miner there and that is two draws from the bag then we have the blue deputies they will take two draws for the, from the bag for every robber is that is in that building and they will send those robbers to the jail and we'll leave those there just for now because uh, we need to talk about jail in a minute and then whenever uh, whenever you've done an action with a meeple you push it into that building then we have the madame she runs the salon a saloon <laughs> a salon she might run the salon as well uh side business hard times uh when you take the uh, madame, you can start her anywhere and she will send all the builders in a building to the salon and then she will enter and for each building builder she sends, she gets one draw from the bag. If you ever, at the end of your turn, have uh, the lowest amount with a gold bar by it of gold, so if you have six, uh, initially seven or eight gold, you must exchange that gold back into the bag for a gold bar which is worth 10 points at the end. If you want to break out the robbers you will take all the robbers from here again start from anywhere um, for example you might go like this and then you will take before you make any draws you will take one of the dynamites put it in the bag and then whenever a dynamite is drawn it is put here three dynamites there uh, that's the end. So let's say let's say i take a turn and i do this take these three out i put um the robber here as blue and then i put the miner here which gets me nothing and the build here which gets me nothing at this stage then let's say the other player does this takes these three goes there to build or whatever but they can resolve these in any order but now we have a shootout so this is how the shootout works. All the players involved will roll one die. So here we see that the red, uh, the blue player with the robber has rolled a six and the deputy has rolled a three. Now, there is an order of skill with each meeple. These are the skills for the shooting down here. We see that the deputy is the most skilled, the robber is uh, second best skilled, then the miner, then the builder. Because the deputy is more skilled than the robber, he gets to roll again. 
And if he'd have rolled a six, he would win because he is the most skilled. As is, he's only rolled a one. So the robber wins, the deputy goes to the graveyard, and you get the amount of draws as per the skill level of the person you've killed. The robber will go to celebrate his victory in the salon, and uh, so on and so forth. If you have two people of equal skill in the shootout, then they both get the draws from the bag, but they both die and go to the graveyard. At the end of the game, gold bars are worth 10, gold cubes are worth one, and awnings are worth five or 10, depending on how, uh, if you've upgraded them or not. That's how to play A Fistful of Meeples. A Fistful of Meeples is a delightful game in a small box. It is the companion game to Coloma from Fantasy uh, Final Frontier Games, uh, but also by Johnny Pack, the same designer. It looks great with the art by the Michaud or Maiko, never remember how to say it, uh, but, uh, and it plays out with this really, uh, what you think is gonna be simple uh, kind of Mancala mechanism, but it's also not so simple. It's kind of like a mini five tribes, sort of, in that you, you pick up this group of people, you move them around, but you've always got to think, what color am I leaving where? Unless the game goes on and more people take ownership of the buildings, then there comes a point where suddenly your actions are definitely going to give somebody else opportunity as well as you. And it's how you manage those points. Uh, there, I love that there's so many different ways to end the game. Um, I thought originally, I thought, oh, it's always going to be people chasing this and that. And, um, uh, you know, it's always going to play out the same way. I've played this loads, I demoed it at Essen. And it doesn't, you know, the score, I think you have that illusion because the scores are, all, are usually in multiplications of five. Um, sometimes you get a couple of ones and twos because it's five and ten for the shops and then ten for the gold bars. Um, so, but yeah, it just, it baffles me how this plays out so well each time. Um, sometimes, if I'm one minor, minor criticism, sometimes you get to the point in the game where the saloon becomes uh, pretty much useless, I would say. Um, and it's usually when games go on longer um, and the madame has taken a lot of the builders out of the game. Um, and, and so this, we've had up to 16 builders in the saloon and no one wants to go there because <laughs> to play some all over and you'd be giving everyone else a building opportunity. Usually by that time, it's, I think it's kind of a, me me a mechanic that cleans up the board anyway, because usually by that time you've all built enough as it is anyway, or you haven't got the materials, so it's not that much of an issue. It, it's just more one that kind of stuck in my brain of, of you look over there, oh, there's lots of builders there, ah, I can never use them. Um, so I'm not sure it's a negative as such, but perhaps it's an observation that if you go down a certain way of playing you, you'll end up with a lot of builders there but I think maybe that cleans up the board and, and makes the decisions a bit easier and less um less uh you know kind of thinking about about helping your friends or such it can be a game that, that does induce a surprising amount of AP analysis paralysis um because even though it's simple you're picking up and placing out left or right uh, because each of those colours does something different and sometimes they activate for someone else, uh, the owner of the building, there, there's quite a lot of thought that goes into it. You've got to decide which way you're going. You've got to decide which order you place out the different types of meeples. And then you've got to act all those out. Uh, so it can, for, for the size and length of the game, it can, probably the percentage uh, proportionately of AP will be surprisingly high, should we say. That's probably how I would put it. Um, but apart from that, I absolutely love it. It's still only gonna take 15 to 20 minutes. Just the people who take longer, it will feel like longer because of that. Um, I think there's an incredible amount of depth in this tiny box. Uh, and uh, yeah, just think it's a brilliant, brilliant game. Easy to teach, uh, quick to play, yet with a satisfying amount of crunch. Uh, thanks very much for watching another Zatu review. Please do like and subscribe to our videos. Uh, go down uh, and join us on Facebook where we do a lot of live content. See you next time.